the only concert the band will play in England at Nebworth. An outdoor rock festival in front of 50,000 is the sharp end of the music business. Professionalism reigns supreme. A few mistakes could lead to a riot and worse, a loss of a performing license. What the promoter needs is a softly banked hill, surrounded if possible by trees. 4,000 sheets of corrugated iron to keep out the gate crashers. A metallic roadway to keep out the mud and a 90-foot stage that took five weeks to build. Like nothing else on Earth, a rock festival preens itself on details. It isn't very often 10 coin box phones are requested for the middle of a field. Give them enough notice and the post office will provide. For the council, a rock festival means a series of meetings, public safety and public order, trying, they say, to keep the public happy. It's quite a complex operation, really, isn't it? It is much more than the public think. They imagine you just put a stage up, plug in, and, and put a, a couple of amplifiers, and away you go. But it, it really, you're starting off with all the amenity of, of quite a large town. That's public health, safety, welfare, medical services. And for instance, there are at least 250 trained personnel on the Red Cross and ambulance, and that includes about 14 doctors, and they do a wonderful job. It's like running a town for a day, really, isn't it? It is. You provide everything that a large town has for one day, food and not a, even their amusement. Are you worried that things might go wrong on this one? Not worried. You're always a bit anxious when you've got a great number of people like this, and you're glad when it's over. But I wouldn't say I'm directly worried. I, you know, you're concerned that it shall go off all right. At first, they were anxious about the laser, firing off at aircraft. But after they had a word with the operator and watched the group practice, they gave it the OK. Everything about a rock festival takes its character from the band. Genesis, they decided, were a sensible group. I'm not afraid of the dark. 
Informal, human, self-critical. Three normal people in an extraordinary business. The kind of group that take their wives and children on tour with them. But this year we're doing a, a series of, of shorter tours rather than one long tour of America. We're doing three short ones. So we're never away for more than three or four weeks. And if families join you, then it's not so bad. It breaks it up a bit. How much of your life do you actually spend on the road? How much of my life? Uh... I reckon I've been, I'm told about six or seven months of the year, but it never actually feels like that uh, because it's split up quite a lot. You know, I mean, I, I have been playing in professional bands since I was about 14, so I mean, I've, I've been on the road quite a while. Do you get fed up on the road? Um, no, I find in America, in, di tours kind of have different characters. You know, like in America, most tours are kind of easy to get on with because you can. Uh, there's no um, language barriers. There's nothing like that. And there's, everything's done for your convenience. Whereas in Europe, say, it's a bit more tiring because you have to continually have menus translated and this kind of stuff. If you want to eat, and then you can't eat between three and five. And so it's a bit more of a hassle. I mean, I quite like touring, but uh, when you're on tour, you want to be off, and when you're off tour, you want to be on. It's one of those things. I never expected to, to go into it being in your group. It's really just the, the chance came. And, uh, you know, I just, I really felt that the very early days of Genesis when no, we hadn't played to anyone that we would, could be a very good group. And uh, so I decided to leave university, where I was at the time, and, and do it instead. Are you glad you did that? Oh yeah, definitely. I, mean, I think the experience I've had is in the last 10 years since I took that decision, I've been you know, incredibly sort of fulfilling, if you like. I've just done so much, and done an awful lot of, you know, I've been to an awful lot of places and things like that. That's an awful lot I haven't seen as well, but I think, I think there are a few jobs that, that let you see as much as this one does. Will you give it up, the road, one day? Well, yes, as, as like this, I think. I mean, I, I, I don't really want to play these big concerts too many more times. I mean, this is like Nebworth, for instance, is, is something different because it's such a big thing. But like on tour, in, in general, I'd much prefer to be playing... Um, now we've done the 18,000 or the 20,000 seaters and we've proved we can do it to ourselves and to other people. It'd be nice to go back into playing small clubs or small... Yes, this is what I would like to do, isn't it? And so I can see that maybe myself would go back, still be playing in clubs in front of people in maybe 10 years' time, but obviously not doing this kind of thing. You do it for the music, really, don't you? Yes, so that's the reason why I do it. It's not for the money. It's not for the money, but the money, I mean, you know, this is a very, this is an over-rewarded job, and it makes it a very easy to take the sort of bad, bad part of the job, I suppose, you know. Um, that, that's the only factor. What can you do in the future now? I don't know, I want to try and keep on writing music for as long as I can, but I wouldn't mind at some point doing something totally different. But what that would be, I have no idea. You couldn't really be on the road at 40, could you? I don't know. Well, we're coming up to seeing um, people who are still on the road, you know, in the 30s and late 30s, I mean, the Stones and things. I think it's quite interesting to see what, you know, how these people make out. They still seem to be doing very, very well and performing very well. So I don't think it's necessarily. It's just because rock music is a thing of the last sort of 20 years that people have never seen older uh, people in rock groups. But I don't see why in the future that should be a rare thing at all. Do you see it as a job? Yeah, it's a job. But also a very lucky job because uh, not many people are able to do something that probably brings them more pleasure work-wise than anything else and yet they're able to call it their job, so in a way I feel very lucky in that sense. I mean, are you all millionaires and that kind of thing? Um, no, we're not millionaires. What sort of house would you have? A huge house in the country or just an ordinary house? Uh, I've got an ordinary house in the moment. Just ordinary people, really? <laughs> oh, no, well, I wouldn't say that. Um, yes, fairly average, yeah. Jamil! Their major fear for the festival was ordinary too, the weather. However they played, success would be washed away by rain. <laughs> The sound check was virtually ruined. The arena became soggy. If it was like this on Saturday, the fans would have 16 hours in the rain, and even the band would need Wellingtons. Altogether on this site, they've got 450 of these loos, 300 feet of urinal, and they'll need them. Because over the back, they're delivering 180,000 cans of Coca-Cola, and that's got to be disposed of somewhere.
The statistics of a rock festival are intimidating. 25,000 sandwiches. A seven ton lorry load of meat pies and sausage rolls. Two Arctics full of tea and coffee. A truck of sweets and ices from Bristol. 20 ice cream stalls and a 50 outlet catering service. By Friday night, the gently sloping field looked like Brighton before a sunny Saturday. And the promoter was calming down. Do you know how much money you will make when the whole thing is added up? <laughs> that's, that's a great question to ask me. No, I'm afraid I don't at the moment. I, I mean, uh, as you can know, you probably don't see because you've just really come in at a fairly quiet moment. But um, things escalate all the time. You know, uh, backstage, our requirements because of the rain uh, mean to, we need all sorts of extras and these add to the cost all the time. Is there a chance you could lose money? Um, <laughs> Not really, I don't uh, I don't know. It's, um, again, on this particular concert, I think we're reasonably in, in good shape there. But um, w w when you have rain and additional problems and additional expenses, certainly that's one of the uh, times when you could. Why do you do it? <laughs> To make a living, I suppose, is, 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 uh, should be the, the, the obvious thing to say, but probably because it's a challenge. Um, it's quite a sort of uh, an exercise, which I like to think I do well, and I like to think I can do better each time. No one, probably not even Freddie Bannister, could say for certain how many would actually come to the festival. But already, a whole day early, a compact village of tents had assembled outside. French, yeah? You've not come all the way from France with us, have you? Really? Yeah. How'd you get here? Hopcroft. Train down here. I've been all the way from France for this. You're obviously fans, aren't you? Of course. Have you got a tent? No. Aren't you going to get wet? Maybe. <laughs> Don't care. No. Genesis, 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 how are you? It's 3 30 in the morning. Right? Genesis are here. It does not matter. Oh, it sure does if it's raining. No, it doesn't. Oh, well. Phil Collins will uh, make it all the right in the next day. I wish you a pleasant evening. Thank you. See you there. Okay. Allez, bye bye. Au revoir. People, you know, you need a flag. The campsite bedded down like an army the night before battle. Alarms were set early. First in, would get the best patch of grass.
The security was overpowering. 500 volunteers, many from the army, were paid 20 pounds to politely see that no one went where they shouldn't. The crowd looked skyward. If £5.50 seems a lot for a ticket, most of the fans would have paid double that for sunshine. There were headaches and migraines, asthmas and fractures, cuts and burns and epileptic fits. But above all, there was patience. They waited 13 weekend hours on damp grass in cold wind before the top of the bill came on. sound of a scream from below he thinks he is a warrior so he picks up his sword and goes from the mouth of the monster he rescues the maiden fair ah but we know she's a demon come to lure him to the demon's lair through his last voyage tall trees he leads to a house in a clearing a place in happier she calls home
Within an hour, five weeks of planning will have come to an end. The crowd would be left to shuffle home through the dark. The trucks would be revving up at the ramp behind the stage, the equipment back on the continent by Tuesday. But for the moment, the technological orchestra was working, a group of musicians caring first about the music. Music 